Hello and welcome to new video. Today we're gonna take a look at some Great League battles here from Godgleich9000 playing a team that I suggested in the um, video for like the new Pokemon. Here first off you could have stayed in already by the way with the Altaria against this Talonflame that would have been better as the Talonflame cannot really do anything against the Altaria either but they're going to stay in here anyway against the um, lantern here. Otherwise, if you want to actually copy the team, by the way, that I put in my videos there, you should also copy the movesets maybe because the lantern does usually want to run the water gun in this case. Here, this like this player uses the spark version, which in this scenario, for example, especially for the um, glare and stun fisk, is a worse version as you cannot KO it with two um, serves usually and with the water gun you just hard pressure this thing in general with the fast move already. Um, usually spark is of course the recommended moveset for P on PvP poke as well but you kind of want to run on this team definitely the water gun version as this is your stay swap for this team. So this is already one thing. In general he said I should um, definitely judge his place and try. Uh, he tries to get better so here first things first. Otherwise you have uh, the Dragon Pulse on the uh, um, Altaria, I would suggest you if you don't have the Moonblast from the Community Day, go for the Dazzling Gleam instead, because the Dragon Pulse doesn't really give you any benefits, in my opinion at least, while at least the Dazzling Gleam would be able to hit stuff like Dark Types for super effective damage. Okay, let's go alright into the second game now about like everything around it. It's a little bit trickier now to play this team as you don't really have a designated say swap. Here this is a pretty decent lead, but yeah, in general, if you want to play this team, this team I think is really, really good to be honest. I really think this is one of the best teams that you can run right now. Run the water gun version of the Lantern as you have pressure then for the hardest answers for it. Other than grass types, of course. Grass types you will never be able to beat with this, but it is fine. Actually, this matchup is pretty okay-ish now for the Altaria, but sadly you get debuffed. That's kind of sad. You go into your own Registeel, which they're going to threaten you now with a one-shot move with the Focus Blast here. I guess it's a good shield and I guess it's also good for you to go for the Zap Cannon here. It's a little bit of a tricky matchup now, as you're going to be able to get both shields down from them, which I think is the right play in general. Like this will not KO, they still have to throw off against you afterwards, but they're actually going to go into their Pelipper, which is really, really good for you, as you can go for one Zap Cannon now and you still have your Lantern where you can swap out immediately here. Okay, good as you're going to be able to resist everything. Lantern is a super bulky Pokemon, so you see how little damage it does. Don't go for the move here, you didn't have to go for any charge move at all, really. I mean, you can still do it, but like, I don't think it was really necessary as, yeah, now you still get to another move here, but I think you could have just farmed down the Pelipper, you would have had one hand energy at the end of the day. And you have been able to also clean this game a little bit easier with a little bit less stress, but this was fine as well. As we see in the next game here, we have the Bastion again here. Water Gun would be also better as a safe swap, but they're going to swap out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Here, I guess the Spark is better. Spark and Water Gun in general have like very interesting matchups. They're like very, very different, so... Um, here we see the Thunderbolt getting shield as well. You don't have to shield the first move against the Sableye in general as well, especially if this was clearly a foul play. Foul play does around, I would guess like 30 to 40 percent, if like I've never really seen it, but based on the fast move damage, yeah, exactly around 30 to 40 percent. And you can go for some Thunderbolts here, which sadly doesn't KO him. You cannot realign, but you should go into your your um, Reggie Steel here, I guess, but you don't. And you should swap it immediately here, but you don't. Okay, you want to store the move. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. I actually like this play now. I actually like this play. Expecting the fighting type in the back, but I think it's still going to be a little bit rough because you will not be able to really use this energy at all. So I don't actually like that. Yeah, the spike didn't really help you at all. You have to let this move go through. You do let this move go through, but you're still getting most likely wrecked here. Yeah, there's nothing that they can do anymore. I don't think there was a way for you to win this game anymore unless you would have been able to realign your Pokemon, I guess. Yeah, you would be able to realign your Pokemon. You would have been better off, um, but... Yeah, that's kind of, I guess the secondary matchup was very important here and you kind of sadly didn't win this, which is sad. We see a Haunter now having access to Ice Punch, something that I also kind of want to showcase, but I have to see. I have a rank 1 Haunter and you have to shield this. Okay, they're running the Ice Punch, it's a good thing that they shield this here, recognizing that the move change was live there already. 
and we see them going now into a lantern again to catch the ice puncher. Very good move there. Catching this ice puncher was very helpful. As we see the uh, Medicham coming in, this is also the beauty of this team. Um, you have a lead Pokemon in general that doesn't want to face ice types, which the lantern can deal with pretty easily, and doesn't really want to face also um, fairy types and stuff like this. And lantern is also neutral against those. But like the back nine in general, like the the core between the Altaria and the Rachi Seal has been around since the first season of Go Battle League and it's still like so viable. Actually, interesting play here of going into the um, Rachi Seal to get more farm. I think this is a good play as they stay in here for, with the Haunter for too long, which is very good. You can go exactly for the um, Sky Attack. Sky Attack is the best move to throw here. And I think you should be able to win this game pretty easily at this point of time as the opponent can only go for hard hitting charge moves here don't shield anything here um they don't have a move that can hit you <laughs> so yeah <laughs> for the next time don't shield here um the haunter will be the more scary thing and they also going to let this move go through they can go for one move but even a shadow ball wouldn't ko you from this range and an ice punch so it's going to be a good game but again you don't have to shield against the mobile there mobile is a reggie steel counter if they run the fire fang but fire fang is the only move that can really hit your reggie steel so you have to be a little bit careful there as we see a medicham in the lead here that isn't still fully powered up it's 1410 CP, so not the craziest, but still, like you see, also how crazy the lantern is in most of the matchups. I think you need five sparks to get to one surf, which is amazing. This Pokemon is now so so good. This upgrade made it so much better. And I'm curious how the first regional is going to go. Definitely going to watch this and try to make some content out of this as well. I don't know when they are, like I'm away on vacation soon, so maybe they are doing this, but I don't think so. I think they're the weekend afterwards, so I hope I can get, do some content for this as well. As we see an Azumarill coming in here, Azumarill doesn't win against this thing at all, like no matter which set you run. I think the, surf ver the other version would also be fine, the water gun version, because you do damage over time. As you can go for one surf here with the spark version. Spark, of course, is better. But, um, oh, yeah, this was some lag. This was definitely not on your fault. This happened to me a lot of times as well yesterday that the moves just don't go through. And this you had to throw here definitely earlier. But they actually go for the rock slide instead of the drill run. That's kind of interesting. As the dance burst also has access to drill run, which would easily knock you out. So that's kind of kind of rough. But actually, you can still go for surfs. Like, they cannot farm you down here. Rollout is a horrible move, actually. I really don't like rollout. I really just don't like this move. It's just basically a worse version of uh, lock-on. So, yeah, it's, it's just... It's tough to use. Like, I really don't use, like this move at all. Um, it generates a lot of energy, but I actually really don't think that the move update for it was necessary with this time around. Like, they lowered the energy that this move generates, and I don't think it was necessary whatsoever. I think it was a horrible move before. I think it's still a horrible move. Of course, you generate energy pretty fast, but still, like, it's just a way worse lock-on, so why would you use it? Um, we see the Jellison here. Pretty okay-ish matchup. You saw him now throw going into the... Reggie Steel. You can actually stay in against the um, Jellison for a little bit with your lead as well. Your lead is pretty fine with this. And here, I think actually on your team now, the Reggie Steel is the better say swap because you'd run Spark on it. So on the other one, on the on the Lantern. So I think the Reggie Steel is actually better in this case. Otherwise, use the Lantern if you run Water Gun. But here, this would be a hard counter anyway for the Lantern as this is a Trevenant. You kind of can shield here. Yeah, the shield was fine. The Shadow Ball would have hurt a lot, so I think the shield was okay. You can stay in here for a little bit, but you could also swap out already because you have your Lantern. Like, now you could have swapped out. But you, you please let this move go through. Like, they usually don't run Ice Beam, they run Bubble Beam. Swap. You should swap out here already at this time. You try to catch the move, which was not really necessary. Um, you should have swapped out earlier already, and now you have a way lower health Lantern against this Hypno, which is a little bit tricky, to be honest. But they can go for not even a surf anymore. I think you survived this. This should be a punch, and I think you survived it. Even the Thunder Punch, you should survive. Never mind. Um, I guess the Thunder Punch was a little bit too much. Is they you can go now for one sky attack and undercharge, which was not necessary because now you get damaged by this shadow ball. Um, but maybe this gives you the edge against this Jellicent, but I don't think you will be able to win this game here because it's going to not do as much, but maybe the Dragon Breath? No. Oh wait, this is only a Bubble Beam, right? It's only Bubble Beam you win this game, no actually. Good game there. Very tough one, it's like 
yeah, it's like those calls that are 50-50. Like I wouldn't use, do most of the plays that you did there, but at the end of the day, it worked. So like, how can I judge it? It's like kind of most likely not the optimal play, but if it works at the end of the day, why not? Here, for example, where Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam would be way better uh, against an Umbreon, this matchup just is way better with this. This was also not really necessary, and again, wrong save swap usually here. Um, the thing is, yeah, like the thing is, if you swap out, want to swap out against an Umbreon anyway, just do some damage with a Dragon Breath. Don't throw your charge wood and swap out into your Rarity Steel if they want to stay in. One Focus Bust is enough. Yeah, but if you already damage it to halfway through, that is kind of tough, and you're throwing a Focus Blast against a Ghost. I guess you can do this, but I'll guess you can get to another one. Okay, I didn't expect this one to be honest. Someone knows their Reggie Steel IVs a little bit better than me. As um, <laughs> you can just go into your Altaria, take all the moves, I guess. And yeah, okay, you shouldn't have shielded this. You don't shield this either, okay. Um, it's just a bone club, okay. Um, but this is very weird to watch actually. <laughs> As we see a Dark Bolt coming through from the Umbreon, you can go for an Sky attack here, and you can rely on your lantern in the back. You can swap into the lantern, you can let this move go through, and let's see what they have in the back. Full play comes through here. They have a Nido Queen. Again, here, Water Gun would be cooler, but also the Surf might be a little bit better. Like the uh, Spark might be a little better to get to the Surf a little bit faster, but I think, okay, with Water Gun, this thing would be already down, I think, at this point of time, because Water Gun damage is super effective and does way more damage than at the spark. So we see here the surf coming through, winning the game basically if at this point of time the opponent decides to forfeit and it's going to be a good game. But again, I would rather run the water gun with this team if you want to run the team that I at least thought of in my video. But yeah, here they used the wrong safe swap as well with the um Reggie Steel, which I guess is still the better safe swap if you run Spark. We see them going now for one um Zap Cannon here. I actually like this play to be honest, but it doesn't really help you too much. As you can now go into the. Both are fine. You go into the Altaria. And you go. This matchup is better than you think. Like, this matchup is better than you think, but it's also. You have two hard answers in the back, so like, you kind of want to swap out here now. You don't want to throw the move if you have a lantern in the back. Uh, yeah, you can still throw the move later if you get back into this matchup, but. You tried to swap there, I think. You tried to swap onto the lantern, didn't get it through. It's fine, but you have to kind of... Do you actually throw it? Okay, you know you catch the move, which I like, but um, it doesn't do that much damage. We see the Armion coming in. It's still fine. You can just spam Surf. I think spamming Surf is even better than spamming Thunderbolt. I think Surf does more damage per energy, but I'm not sure. Thunderbolt is pretty mediocre. Surf is pretty good, so... Uh, I'm not sure, but I think the Surf is a little bit better here, especially when they have st still two shields left. I think Surf is just a safer way. You kind of want to shield here now. There you go for the foul play. You can try to catch the move. I think you, that it was a CMP time. Yep, okay. Um, in general, throwing like this is a little bit tricky sometimes. You throw always on the CMP tie, which uh, gives them, of course, sometimes a fast move for free if it doesn't work, but... This time around it worked as you can go for a still two charge moves here which is very nice and they have to ko you know it's going to come down to the wire it's actually going to be very close now you're gonna be able to spark him all the way down you can get to the thunderbolt or one hp in a dream like honestly lantern is such an mvp can't wait to see this in action like, this thing going to be everywhere in the regionals like honestly this pokemon going to be so amazing it's definitely the best upgrade for the great league and i think it's also a cool upgrade because it kind of breaks down the meta which i really enjoy for this pokemon as we see the opponent coming in here into it what into a Jellicent. Um, this is a very easy matchup for the Reggie Steel. Usually, you can just let. It actually kind of have a, It's kind of a tough matchup sometimes as well, but you can just let the first move go through to go for the Zapkin now. The player over farms here to 100 energy, which is pretty decent, as you can still take one move here. You don't have to shield. You do shield, and now you get bubble beamed, so. Uh, <laughs> you, you debuff the opponent, so the Shadow Ball does less damage nowadays, so. It's kind of tough, but actually you don't get the debuff here. I still forget sometimes that the Zap can isn't guaranteed debuff anymore, but oh, yeah, this is a little bit tough now. <laughs> this doesn't KO, definitely not, and the charm kind of hurts you, but I guess it is the best play. This is like the tough thing to face a Whimsicott. Whimsicott is not meta whatsoever. My team doesn't 
consider Whimsicott. Like, I didn't build this team for Whimsicott. Whimsicott going to destroy this team. Totally fine for, like, the lead at least in the Lantern. But usually Chalmers don't really like the Lantern, so it's usually decent, but you see the... Actually, you should... Oh, no, they get to the move here. Can the Lantern still win this? We have to see here. Lantern has access to... Again, Water Gun would have been better. Hmm? <laughs> but yeah, Lantern has access to Surf. Let's see how they throw their charge moves. They go straight for it. In this scenario, you just gave the opponent one extra free turn, which they didn't need to get. So it's kind of something that I don't like to see, to be honest. But now you can go straight. This is fine. You still might be able to win this game. How much energy did the Jason still have? We have to see. They can still get to a charge movie. I think this is enough to kill the opponent even with a bubble beam and yeah it is so yeah um the team is a little bit not correct at least from what i can see here like you should run the water gun in my opinion if you want to run this team also you should try to stay with like one say swap in this case i would say swap water gun um lantern other than this um move timing learn a little try to be a little bit better with this especially like later on in the gameplay you saw that they gave away some free turns to the opponent by not throwing in private alignment you always try to have one move difference basically between your charge move and the opponent's fast move so for example if you have a uh, Three turn move against you and you have a two turn move, you throw your two turn move for example after a one, so that you have two turns in, the opponent needs three turns for their fast move and you have basically this one turn where you can throw your charge move without the opponent getting a fast move through. So some small details there. I think you can definitely build on it, I think you still have a very good understanding in general for uh, Pokemon itself. But yeah, some minor issues there. And otherwise, I really appreciate that you sent in those medals. Thanks all for watching. See you next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.